my check one two one two. My sweet waifu. Is that you? My check. My check waifu waifu. Hey Tell, is that you? Mr. Polo Born for himself, how you doing? Hey. Welcome to episode 27 of My Check Waifu Waifu. It's your boy Polo. And of course, as always, with my co-host, Mr. Uh, Leak It All, King Teliano. <laughs> as long as you know, all leaks every day. Not really. <laughs> nah, dude, you just talking about it. He don't leak everything. But welcome to uh, My Check Waifu Waifu. This is episode 27. And as always, we're brought to you by Lou Complex. Go to lucomplex.com and use the offer code Waifu to save on your entire cart we also got to thank a special thank to our patreon supporters our patreon producers in general and he's back baby chris goody win is back as a patreon producer so shout out to you brother thank you for coming back to uh to the fold and supporting the podcast at that producer tier the weeb tier that we call it we appreciate you so very much also connor and monique williams of course thank you all so much for your support as well and to all of everybody on our patreon we love you so very much you support us. You support our dream. This is our dream, and we appreciate you. Um, also, hey, check out the Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash my check waifu waifu. We got some pretty dope rewards there. Um, we do an extra, a whole extra podcast for our Patreon supporters. Um, it's just a podcast about everything, whatever we want to talk about, what's going on in life, video games, and, and, and so forth. We actually just dropped a three-part video game, like Let's Play. Uh, on there for everybody so it's free for everybody just go check that out on our patreon or the youtube now we got a lot to talk about today on episode 27 because this is the episode where we review dr stone i'm looking forward to that um big time but first we got some uh smaller topics to discuss here so tell do you want to start off with your comments or you want to go with mine yeah um, we can start with mine. That's cool. Okay, but real quick, I feel like that intro was probably the best one I've ever done. <laughs> that was clean. <laughs> it was. We need to copy and paste that one. Yeah, I know, I right? <laughs> um, uh, all right. So I do have a bit of a topic. What's up? And it's kind of about uh, anime slash manga that people forget is an anime or manga, mm. and it's of like my favorite, like what you would consider like a cartoon or a video game hero and it's about Sonic the Hedgehog. What? Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I love Sonic the Hedgehog, dude. He's yeah, like I know that. character of anything. I'll never forget uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> you used to draw him <laughs> faithfully. Faithfully, dude. I remember uh, when I first came to Maple in third grade, one of the things I used to do um, after school is I would literally go to Pat Catan's or what most people know is like Michael's or yeah. uh, Hobby Lobby or something. I will go grab this giant poster board. It was like a two and a half by like four foot or three foot poster board. And I would draw the Sonic the Hedgehog character on them real big. <laughs> and I, when I was finished, people in my school would be like, hey, let me add it, let me add it. It's so dope. It's so cool. So that's kind of like how I got into drawing in the first place is because mm-hmm. it was like, that's what I used to do after school. I thought it was the coolest shit in the world was to <laughs> like just go after school and go pick up this poster board and yeah. draw my, 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 what I thought then was cartoon characters. Really found out that Sonic the Hedgehog and Goku are anime characters. Right. So, I don't know. I'm just like, I think every day, like, don't nobody, like, pay attention that, like, Sonic the Hedgehog is an anime character. And yet, even though his games, like, the games um, have been, like, on a instant, nonstop, like, death roll to down. Yeah, for sure. Spiral. Uh, <laughs> literally, Sonic the Hedgehog is one of the like anime characters that in like slash video game characters that just never dies. And And no matter how bad it does, it never dies. Hence why we got this movie coming out. (laughs) Right. Uh, Which, which uh, kudos to them for reanimating. Yeah. I would vibe with it regardless, but he looks a thousand times better. There's no chance in hell you would have vibe with that first design, dude. I I was, I wasn't complaining about it. You are are actually insane. You know how, bro. You know how I am about art. You know how I am about other people's art. I think everybody should express their art how they see it, how they see fit, bro. But there is a such no. thing as being wrong. No, 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 I get it. The look was wrong. <laughs> it was wrong. It was creepy. He looked like some hamster on, on like a 
death roid. Yeah, with human teeth. With human teeth, yes, bro. That was horrible. Um, oh, shit. But <laughs> legit, like, I think people forget the greatness of Sonic the Hedgehog. So I just want to talk yeah. to y'all about some good. of the feats of Sonic the Hedgehog. Y'all, you cool with that, Polo? Then do your thing. I'm going to let you All take right. this one. So um, this week in Mike Check Waifu Waifu Facebook group, we had a death battle between the ever faithful speedster known as Flash, which everyone knows, everyone loves. It's, it's like everyone is clear on how, how strong Flash is. They, they argue that he might be the strongest in DC Comics, whatever. Easy. Right? He is my favorite of DC Comics. Now, my favorite of Marvel is Iron Man. But um, the death battle was obviously Sonic the Hedgehog versus um, the Flash. And I, I begged the, the comparison that Flash should have full capabilities of the speed force, meaning he can use his maximum capacity. And Sonic could have full ca- um, control over like the Chaos Emeralds and whatnot. Uh, I didn't say necessarily Master Emeralds, but I mean, the Master Emeralds are Chaos Emeralds, so we can rock with that too. And people just like in base level don't realize how fast Sonic the Hedgehog is because what is it? In video game comparisons, they said Mario is faster than Sonic. And I was like, if you compare the game side by side, the original games that came out way back when, oh it's actually God. true. That, that's Christ. the truth, right? But it's all based on perspective, obviously. That's it's, what that's what people measure to. Because if of you, fucking if, bit. Like it is eight bit. <laughs> I'm not even yeah, gonna right. get into that. Right, right. But um, the beauty behind it is that we actually have manga or you know comics behind Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. to back up what kind of how speed fast he actually he really is. has. Yeah. So um, Sonic the Hedgehog in a um. Not even Archie Comics. This is after Archie Comics. And Archie Comics is the strongest Sonic has ever been. He's ridiculous in Archie Comics. But he literally runs to the future backwards, how fast he goes. And in game, it's like all based off he has to go to the speed of light to even be able to do that, right? And that's not even with like full power. He's just running. You know, just like, but isn't that relative though? You run to the future backwards. That's relative. Yeah, yeah, it's relative, right? <laughs> but they they were talking about how he had to go at least the speed of light to be able to do that. Yeah, which pretty fast, right? Uh, but then there's other feats where he has control of the cast emeralds, and then you go there's supersonic, hyper or supersonic, ultrasonic, then hypersonic. Hypersonic has control over the elements where he yeah. can change like elements at an atomic level, like fire, water, uh, sand, or, or earth or whatever. He's basically the avatar, but Sonic, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, in a speed race, I would agree that Flash can beat Sonic the Hedgehog, but in an all out fight, Don't you Sonic, Sonic would turn that boy into atom dust. Oh, because he got the powers. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, also, Sonic literally fell from outer space and hit the ground on his face and, and just got up like nothing happened. <laughs> like a cartoon. He's more cartoon. I mean, I know he's Japanese animation, too, but he's like he's a he's a he, he, Looney Tune character, essentially. He, basically, he's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. So I don't, but that's why I don't think like the comparison is fair. Is right. Like we given this character who literally basically has no true limitations because he is not meant to look or be human entirely versus a character who they they put human constraints constraints on Mm -hmm. even though he has all these superpowers i'm gonna say sonic wins the fight but it's just like look up Sonic the hedgehog bro not even not you but the guys who listen look look up Sonic the hedgehog the guy is amazing um he is a a manga uh slash anime character whenever you watch it is technically anime even though it comes in english first but (laughs) uh I mean, it's all about who produces the animation, right? If the yeah, anime is produced in America, then it's not anime. It's a cartoon, which it, Sonic it, is produced in America, though. Uh, not originally. Well, okay, okay. Originally. I mean, I it depends on the version you're talking about, because there's like 17 versions of this yeah, TV show. like Sonic X, if I'm not mistaken, was produced in America. Yeah. And but, then even the newest one is produced in America. Yeah, like but the, I'm talking about like before that, like the one yeah. with uh, Jalil. Okay. Uh, 
as I believe all the animation itself was done in Japan and then the actual uh voice actors were English or American. I got you. I got you. Uh, yeah, that's never been my wheelhouse. The only Sonic I like is of course on Genesis when my brother used to have it back in the day, but I yeah. and I also enjoyed the uh the uh what's the GameCube one? S- Sonic Adventure? Yes, yeah, Sonic, Sonic Adventure. Well, it was on it was on Dreamcast actually. I had it on Dreamcast and the Dreamcast obviously didn't last that long. So it, it was ported over to GameCube and I played the hell out of that one. Other than Sonic Generations, bro, Sonic Adventure was like the best Sonic Adventure yeah. game. Cause it had that it had that uh where you raise a little little chaos uh the child. Thing. Yeah, the child, whatever they call it. That was they my favorite part of about that game. They could literally just release that part of, of the game and people would buy it. Yeah, that was like, my favorite. Part. I had the uh the golden child made him learn karate. Same. He had this little black belt and stuff on. I was like, let's go. I had gold, silver, and black was my three favorite ones. Mm-hmm. And it took me forever to get those. <laughs> of course. Because what would you had you had to do something special? You had to go steal the silver one. Mm-hmm. Um the gold one you had to win something, right? Yep. Or like a and, I think it was a time trial or some shit like that. Yeah, and then the the black one you had to steal from the evil people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like shadowing them, right? So that was dope. Um, okay, all right. Good little side topic. I would have never thought you were coming at me with that though. That Bro, was a know, complete I, shocker. <laughs> I know. I, hey, I just needed to throw that out there because you know I love Sonic, and yeah, I, I, I'm so tired of Sonic. Like Sonic getting slandered more than like Fire Force out here. No, nothing is getting slandered more than Fire Force. <laughs> which, which this is what I'm gonna do because we're obviously shout out to Worst Generation Podcast. Like I say, ever like on Twitter, I don't agree with almost anything that Worst Generation Podcast says, but I love their podcast. I love their chemistry. They always sound like they're having fun. So go, go, <laughs> go listen to them if y'all got the chance. They're they're awesome, and they're also extremely close to 1,000 followers on Twitter. Hopefully, by the time y'all hear this podcast, they got it. So go follow them. They're awesome. Worst Gen Pod. Uh, Worst Gen underscore pod, I believe it is. On yeah, Twitter. yeah, that's it. Yeah. So give them a follow. They're awesome. And they're also participating in our um, Dr. Stone review today. They gave, some of their hosts gave their review of it. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But man, the Fire Force Slender is real. What I plan to do, what I plan to do is I plan to go back and watch it because I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do an entire breakdown. It may even be a whole separate video of Fire Force's story. I'm going to try my best to summarize it for people because I understand after listening to their podcast, why they don't like it because it's quote unquote boring to them. But when you're watching fire force, the thing about fire force is you notice there is, there's not a lot of action at first, right? They don't play music all the time. They literally, they literally hearken on their sound, their, their sound like mixing, like that's that's the most important piece about the pie. I mean, about the uh, anime is their sound mixing. They bring in music when it's absolutely necessary. Most of the episodes don't even have like ambiance music. It's just the world around you. And it's a lot of like quiet talking and stuff, which you kind of get. But the deeper meaning behind it. Oh, my God, it's, it's wonderful. And we'll talk about that. I'm going to get that together. I'm going to script out a whole video for that and try to talk about it the best I can just for when we go on that podcast, because I know I'm going to get eight alive. <laughs> you got to get your facts right. Yeah. All 16 of the members on that podcast. <laughs> yeah, they, about to, they about to at you on Twitter, like uh, pull up getting ready. <laughs> they, they, they about to chew me out. But what I wanted to talk about is I finished season one of Mob Psycho. OK, that was hard to watch. And it's hard to watch because. Everybody told me those fights were so great. Those fights were God awful, in my opinion, like terrible in Mob Psycho. But the story ended up being really, really good in Mob Psycho, dude. It ended up being so good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. But like the animation in Mob Psycho makes my eyes hurt. Like it it literally stings watching it, especially when I was coming straight from Villain Saga. Like I binged Villain, Villain Saga all the way up to episode 21 and that is a lot softer on the eyes. Like, like they have the animation is more crisp. Yes, yeah, it's, it's way more crisp. And this one, it was just so jarring with all this. Like, I feel like I was on LSD or some shit. Like, it was just it was way too much. But other than that, the story and I like I like Mob a lot. Like, Mob and his brother are two of the best, some of the best anime characters and probably anime ever. <laughs> I, I thought Mob's brother was gonna be Sasuke Junior. No, yeah, I mean, you turned around. I was like, thank you for not being a Sasuke. I know, and that's what made him so great. 
That's what made him so great. Elbow drop this show. <laughs> right. That, that that's what made him so great. That's what made me enjoy the show the most was those two. I hated the uh the fucking the rent rent what's his name? Rigan. I the, hated the teacher. I, yeah, the teacher, dude. I hate him a whole yeah, lot. He was the worst. <laughs> and I like the the blonde haired dude that ended up having a whole change of heart. Yeah. Um, now he is also he another also really awesome. good character. Like the characters um, in Mob Psycho are great minus Reagan. So you didn't like the it, animation. The art was the art style was ugly. The animation was gross. It looks it looked like b- a bunch of black clover, but with more pretty <laughs> colors. Like <laughs> it, it did. Like the faces wasn't wasn't in there a lot of the times. It was like it was like they were being stretched and moved around. They were moving around like this. Like like they were just like they were like the wackly inflatable tube man movements. Oh, I, I, didn't, oh, oh. I didn't I didn't like it at all. Um, all right. But the show is good. The show is definitely good. Just the art and the animation was gross to me. But I'm I'm okay with that. Like I can the story being as good as it ended up being was way more than than enough for me to continue watching because uh learning about that world was pretty awesome. I just don't okay. like that animation. Another so, side oh, we'll go, go ahead, my fault. I was gonna say there was no like there wasn't a single part of the fight. Like you didn't like the like the uh not necessarily the story, but you didn't like how like let's say the power scaling in the fights worked. Like, did you like any of that or, uh, I mean, the, did you like the differences in the psychic ability? Yeah. Did... Yeah. No, the, the, the powers and the, and the scale itself, I, I believe is a part of the characters, right? Like that's, that's a part of the world and the characters and the story, the overarching story. That was yeah. fine. Like that was phenomenal. That's what made the show good. But the action sequences behind those fights were terrible. Absolutely horrible. Like when he when he would go one hundred, that's when it would look the coolest. Like like visually, because what happens is a lot of the the crazy ass colors will be toned down, and it'll just be him in that that different that art almost style. Almost avatar. State. Yeah, exactly. The almost avatar state, and it'll be slower because they the intention was to show how powerful he was in that state, and that's when it when it like popped more. But other than that, it was just like. Like this, like it was just <laughs> way too much, <laughs> way yeah. too much. I, I'm, I'm gonna say that that's that's probably actually what I what I did like about it was, and I'm I'm just saying it's not not necessarily disagree because I understand why it does look shitty because it I mean or bad it does it, <laughs> let's be real like the style wasn't meant to be like the most appealing style right. initially right and I get that I, I think that they went for a simple art like simple art style intentionally mm-hmm. so that when things got intense it was so much easier to make it intense yeah. you know and that makes like, sense and that hundred percent makes sense I see exactly why everybody said that yeah. on Twitter too but I one hundred percent I can I can see why you say it looks horrible like if I was to look at this. I guess if I was to compare this to other anime and like how they could have done it, because they mm-hmm. definitely could have stepped the art style up and still made it intense. But yeah. I think it would have given, it wouldn't have given off the kind of vibe. I think they were trying to give, if they did that. I, I understand that. Cause think about it like this. Okay. I'm coming from something like, I, I don't want to use like Ben and Saga. Yes. We watched Steven Slayer earlier this year. We've been watching My Hero Academia. Right. Uh, so Fire Force. So though, when they, when they swing, it's, it's with intention. There is no intention when like stuff was going on in screen. It was just <laughs> that's, that's that's the sound that it looked. It looked like it sounded like that. <laughs> I had to do it because it's the podcast. I can't believe you just made that sound. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna have to cut that one for a clip too. <laughs> Don't do <laughs> was that. Pole level? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, it's 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 a good show. I get it. It's a good show. I can watch season two. I will watch season two. Um, I'm looking forward to it actually. And I also, um, Villain Saga is great. Mm-hmm. I see why everybody's screaming uh, anime of the year for that one. Um, now we did. We we kept talking about. We kept saying it's rated higher than Demon Slayer. Uh, it's been way better than Demon Slayer, dog. Way better. Way better. The characters in in Vinland Saga are two million percent better than Demon Slayers. Again, Demon Slayer character sucks, man. They they suck. The only good characters are Nezuko and Tanjiro. 
And like, you got to have a taste for the other characters in that show. I mean, okay, let me get that wrong. Giyu is also dope, but you barely see him. <laughs> the uh, butterfly chick, you barely see her. Like all the good characters, you don't really see as often as you would like yet. So the first season of Demon Slayer is the characters aren't that great. I only rock with Tanjiro because of his growth. Being a part of that was awesome, which is something they talked about on any Twitter too. They they can't stand how much people hype up Demon Slayer, which is understandable. Now, I'm, I'm saying since you brought up Vinland Saga, there's still an anime this year that was rated higher than Vinland Saga that we didn't watch. What's that? And I mean, I started watching it, but I, I didn't get to the fifth and final season. What's that? And that, that's the Simple Gear one with the girls. Oh, that's an acquired taste, though. You think so? Those, I mean, those, the, those people, first... with, those people ahead, with that ahead, acquired ahead. taste will obviously like something like that. They they gravitate specifically towards that kind of anime, so of course it's going to be rated higher. It's a more controlled group of people. Well, you know what I'm saying, I don't know, bro? It it looked animation wise. I felt like it's something that you would definitely love, and the sound because I remember. If we're looking at animation wise and sound design, it was amazing. I character did. development, yeah, they, did. Did need, they did need a little bit more character development. But I don't the know. actual production value of it was like top tier for sure. I know you notice about me. I'm the slice of life guy. Like, I like story, I like character development way more than I like yeah. just it's, animation or. It's, now, it's also very slice of, slice of lifey. Mm. I think there's now also, talking. from what I've seen, there's a huge like understory mm-hmm. that kind of uh, can be unfolded here. Okay. See, because it has like actual historical backing. Yeah, like Vinland Saga. Okay, I'll uh, check it out. But you know, it's it's it's, it's transformer, uh, like not transformers, but you know, they got girls with super mech arms and oh, yeah. you know, suits. And be kicking shit in the face. Now, yeah. Not really suits, but like they don't they don't turn into robots, but they got like you know arm stuff. Right, right. So, I mean, l- let me check something real quick. Because a lot of people is wondering what's going to be our anime of the year, which probably most. OK, so our last show of this year is literally on, on New Year's Eve. Are we going to be able to do that that day? Uh, yeah, because we do that that Sunday. OK, mm-hmm. that's perfect. So that's when we're going to give our anime of the year. We're going to probably do a top. You want to do a top five of this year? Yeah, we can do a top five of this year. Yeah, From Mike do- Check, Waifu, Waifu. Yeah, yeah. Um. So we we doing that separate, right? Yeah, and and we're also going to say I would say you don't do you want to include series that were completed in this year or series that are even still ongoing, like series that started this year but are ongoing, like because like let's say we give Psycho Pass a fair chance because it started this year. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, that's kind of hard, but yeah, I say we do that too. We just do that with a little caveat, you know? Yeah, we'll do that for sure. Um, damn, what else did I have? I, oh, that's what it was. It was, uh, this anime I was just telling you about before we started. Uh, yeah. High School Prodigies. Dude, this show, I don't know what it is about it. I don't want to say it's bad. Yeah. Because it's not good. <laughs> it's so weird, but I want to watch it. It's about these seven high school students who, it's an isekai, so it's about these seven high school students who are basically prodigies of like Japan, you got the top surgeon, uh, who's, yeah. who's a waifu. You got uh, Japan's youngest, um, what they call it, prime minister. You got Japan's like money mogul, like the number one money mogul. You got uh, their number one newspaper reporter slash ninja. You got the number one magician slash illusionist, illusionist, illusionist. You got their number one inventor. Like, you got all these, like, number one people when they get transported into this different world. So they're, like, super overpowered, obviously, because they all have different skills that kind of complement each other. And yeah. they're basically taking this world and they're bringing it 500 years into the future with the technology they have, they know about and with their skills and stuff. Now, what what I like about it is it's, I, it's so unapologetically uh, just like broken. <laughs> and I, like they don't care that the characters are broken and that the world yeah. is because the characters are broken. Yeah, it's so fucking entertaining. But I'm, I know I'm not supposed to like this show, but I enjoy the hell out of this show. So if y'all watch it, 
Let me know what y'all think about it. Write into Mike Check Waifu Waifu on Twitter or uh, Mike Check Waifu Waifu at gmail.com. Because I don't know why I'm captivated, though. I'm captivated. I'm on episode six. I'm only watching the dubs because I I will not just sit there and focus on the subs because I want to do other shit in the background. But man, I'm 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 enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. It's really uh really good. Well, but not good. I don't know how to explain it, man. It's I, good but not good at the same time. Yeah, dude. It's, it's trash but great. Yes, man. It's great trash. Which I never felt before. I don't think I've ever felt that before. Yes, you have. We you had to. Well, what? I don't know. I don't know, bro. You had to. What else is great what, trash? What could you feel like was, was I don't know, like black, like Oak. how we said Lord El Malloy in the case files. Oh I think yeah, was, I think that most people are not gonna watch that, but it was great trash. Yeah, like, it was, know. it was great to me, but I know it's I, I know for like for whatever reason, there's no reason I should be watching this. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, if this is anything else, I would have never given it a chance as much as I did. Yeah, no, I feel that. That's what this is. It's it got me though. I don't know how, but it got me. I wish you watched Venom Saga so we could talk about that because this latest episode just dropped, I believe, yesterday, and it's yeah. fucking fire. What they well, do? Let's, well, let me let me just give you just one thing. Yeah, with, go ahead. With, with Venom Saga, Venom Saga does what my hero isn't. Okay. And let me tell you what that is. They're giving backstory at the perfect opportunities. This episode was mostly backstory. But guess what? I wasn't upset about it because where they placed the backstory, where they placed the backstory wasn't in the middle of an important event, wasn't during a fight to try to, quote unquote, captivate you and make you care about the actual fight. It was placed in the pace. It was placed in a pace where you can. It, it was after the fight. It was done. And it was so and it was still just as meaningful, if not more meaningful after that, because you you kind of see with uh, with what the story was about, kind of the villain's point of view. Which is it's crazy. His backstory was nuts. Like, I actually care about this villain now. And um, that's all I'm going to say to that, because I'm not going to spoil it now. I actually that is a, a point of debate that I actually did want to bring up. That's exactly something I want to bring up, right? Um, and I want to compare this to Black Clover. Gross. Right. <laughs> Why? So we talk about how in Black Clover, these characters get these magical power-ups out of nowhere and how they get stronger and stronger and stronger. And it seems almost like undeserved. Mm-hmm. And I feel like what my hero is doing is in the middle of this fight before letting their characters get like this level up out of nowhere, they're giving you a story as to why this moment makes sense, whether they win or lose. Right. And it's like, no, nope. I personally think that if they didn't do this, no, my hero would be on the same level as black Clover. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Let me tell you why, because for three seasons, bro, for three seasons, did we not see this class train hard as fuck? Did we not see them learn this stuff? Like, they worked hard to be where they are. They did after-school programs. And they did all kinds of shit to get the powers that they have now and to be to the level that they are now. Now, yeah. I get exactly what you're saying because it's it's putting, it's trying to put you in the emotional mind frame of of going, pushing, quote-unquote, pushing past your limits, shonen, shonen style, right? Mm-hmm. I understand that completely but there's a way you can do that where it doesn't take up most of the episode just because you want to artificially get more episodes in the season because like that's that's exactly what they're doing they're just trying to give you more episodes and i'm 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 gonna say this too in episode or seasons one two and three Mm -hmm. they must be ass do you remember I, i i do you remember any specific episodes where Kirishima got any back background where we actually saw him like training and becoming better. Yes. Like, anything specifically about him where he just changed yes. everything. What was it? Right before the tournament arc. Okay. And what did he what did he do? What 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 level did we see him ascend to that was different than when he first came? I think it was a conversation. It's so hard to remember because that was so long ago. I think it was a conversation with Ayazawa. Um mm-hmm. and no, it was who who was he working with 
back then. I can't remember. It was the Bullet Dude, I think it was. Was that before or after the tournament arc? I can't remember. So he you know what I'm talking about? With, he didn't start working with them until uh, the first time he had an actual training thing was season three when he started working with a, a temp agency. And that, that was with the bullet guy. Well, even then, even then he had some some development because the dude was just telling him, like, listen, you this is how you harden some some pieces of your body. You want to focus on these points. You want to and he and he taught him basically how to get to where he is now. Like they they went through that. Like they gave us yeah. that story. Like again, I'm I'm not saying I'm not saying they're wrong for giving us that backstory at all. Okay. Yeah, you don't, just don't, you don't like the placing. They don't need to give us that much at that point in time. That's it. Yeah. You don't need that much in that particular time. That's that's the only problem I have. I enjoyed the back. His backstory was fucking dope, by the way. Yeah. Like, it was incredible, but it was just the wrong place and way too long. Yeah. The worst, I will say the worst part about where they put that backstory is the fact that they showed us this, okay, I got to make my, my body as hard as possible mm-hmm. two episodes ago or three episodes ago. Mm-hmm. And then basically give us that again. Yep. But they could have cut out some of that backstory and just had them go in there and boom. Like I would rather have backstory on fat gum. Yes. Right I was, there. that was my next point. I would have loved to figure out who the hell fat gum is because he's yeah. incredible. Right. He's so, incredible, uh, but I know nothing about him. Yeah. We know we're going to talk about more about that later, but yeah. that's just something I wanted to bring. I wanted to see, I just wanted to probe your mind a little bit, see what you what you were thinking, what you thought yeah. about what I had to say. Um, but yeah, that was yeah. We all right, we gonna say that for later because yeah. that's at the end of the show. Our wrap up. Yeah. So uh, the, the the point is when Villain Saga they they did it was basically these duels, right? They were uncut, just freshly cleaned, tracking shots of the sword, you know, going different directions and. When one person, I can't, I don't want to spoil it because that would definitely spoil it. It's, it's, it was just beautiful. And it was just so seamless and so beautiful that like watching my hero just makes me think like you could do that too. And they've done it before. They've done it before. So like all my, and um, what's the, the dude that didn't have Off one. No, the, the guy with his brain out. In like season Gnomu. one, Gnomu. yeah, Gnomu. That fight was like that. It was like a lot less backstory in that fight, if I remember correctly. But the fight was epic as hell. Yeah, that was where they were. I think they were still building the mystery, but yeah, yeah, it was it was dope. It was dope. Oh, we'll save the my hero talk for after our break. But um, watch mm. any uh anything else good though? I mean, so you know, I'm always ready to talk about fate. Oh and, yeah, it's, it finally uh, hit six episodes, so I'm starting it I, tomorrow. I love this story progression. Yeah, like this is probably some of my favorite fate story progression. Um, I'm loving the characters more and more. Our main character is like slowly becoming like I don't know, bro. So it's almost you know how that idea, almost like ReZero, where the character, the main character, is mad weak. Yeah. But he has to come out on top. In Fate Grand Order right now, our main character, he's a master, but he's the weakest dude in the show. <laughs> and he's still proving like his guts. Like he can't do much, but he can do what he what he set his heart to, right? Right. And there's just moments that I just feel like it's underrated, bro. It's so I, I'm, underrated. I'm gonna get to it and I'm gonna I'm gonna boast it up with you, I'm pretty sure. Okay, we so about to, we about to blow it up. <laughs> um Let's start getting into this Dr. Stone review, man. <sighs> so first, what did you think about the season finale episode of Dr. Stone? Um, I highly enjoyed it. Um, I wanted I wanted more episodes like that. I, I, I don't know, bro. I just felt like the wrap up with like the 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 uh, gravestones mm-hmm. and all of that. They finally finished, officially finished, like, you know, their uh, phones and they knew they had to make two and they're getting ready to meet with our boy, uh, what's his name, Sa- Saingen? Uh, or they're getting ready to meet with uh, Taijo, Taiju again. And, um, right, and user Usuria. But um, basically, we finally get to see some completion and we get to bring two of our favorite characters back into the fold. Mm-hmm. But now we gotta wait until season two. 
Yeah. See, Dr. Stone, Stone Wars obviously was announced right after that last episode dropped, which, duh. Yeah. Like, if you didn't think you were getting a season two of this show, you're ridiculous. Um, yeah, with all the hype, it, it, we knew it was going to get it. 100%. Yeah, I mean, it was it was decent. Uh, the, the important part was the... Uh, was him talking about the importance of the technology. Like when he was flashing back to, this is what we use our technology for, this is how we used it, this is where it is in the future and how important it is. That part touched me. I'm like, yeah, that shit is incredible. Yeah. And, and his and his dad was, uh, <laughs> when he was talking to his dad, that was the greatest part probably of yeah, the season. He's so cold to his father. Yeah. But like, that's a relationship that only them can understand which is awesome and i like that um sorry if you hear my dog i don't know why he's trying to bite his foot behind me so you might <laughs> huffing and puffing but yeah it it most certainly was a it was a good episode i wouldn't say great or anything like that but it was definitely a good episode um see, see i was gonna say i don't know bro like i feel like the wrap up of this this episode made me like dr stone more it did, than no, I did before me, me too but it's still, we're going to talk about that when we get to it. Yeah, it's not the here. best episode ever. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, so um, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But um, we got some um, some reviews using our official scale. So what I did, right, Let's go. was I went to Twitter, and I gave Twitter a 20-point scale to review Dr. Stone with, kind of like our scale, which I think our scale is based off of. It's 20-point, right? And for those of you that don't understand, 20 point scale is just a 10 point scale system. It's one through 10, but with 0.5 decimals included, which makes it 20 points, right? So you have one, yeah. 1.5, two, 2.5, et cetera. Okay. And then on Facebook, I used the 100 point scale to try to gauge which one I think is better. So we can maybe use it. Like, exactly. Yeah. Use it as like the official, official scale. Um, but the only ones we really got reviews for was from Twitter. Uh, some people, you, yeah, people use the 20 point scale for the most part. And by people, I mean, um, our friends over at uh worst generation podcast, they're awesome. We appreciate y'all. So pretty much we appreciate you for dropping that for us. Yeah. So pretty much all of them use the 20 point scale and it got buried because our Twitter was popping, popping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, if y'all, if y'all don't know, Paulo, Polo runs the Twitter over there yeah, yeah. and he keeps that Twitter popping. Um, I aspire to be as uh, socially uh, advanced as uh, Polo. It's hard. I had to. I had to fight through it. Um, yeah, bro. <laughs> I got one for you. This is from GB, the, one of the main hosts of uh, Worst Generation podcast. And basically, what he gave he gave is pacing nine, story eight point five, animation seven point five, sound design nine point five, characters nine point five. His final total added up to be 8.8. Oof, that's kind of high. Animation 7.5. Okay, I'll, I'll give you mine later. So when we talk about our scale, but okay, I respect it. Um, mm-hmm. What you think about that, Till? I mean, we really gonna dive into that later, but <laughs> there's some there's some things I kind of understand and agree with, and there's others that's like, uh, okay, all right. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, w- I would like to hear more of his like details behind it, like why he chose those right, numbers, right? Which I should have asked. I should have dove deeper into that because uh, I really want to know <laughs> myself. Twitter don't give you that much space. No, nah, they don't, man. And two hundred characters ain't enough, even though that was raised. It used to be what one fifty. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, um, in the meantime, if you have not gone back and, uh, or uh, followed Mike Check Waifu on Twitter, just go there. It is Mike Check Waifu on Twitter, uh, not Mike Check Waifu Waifu. And you can join the Twitter fam, help uh, grow the Twitter um, profile and kind of help us get out there a little bit more if you can. Yeah, we started our Twitter kind of in the middle of uh in the middle of our podcast with like episode 11 or something like that. We started yeah, it super late. We started all the social media. We should have just started at the beginning. I know. I'm a, we're doofuses for that, to be honest. Bruh. <laughs> we out here slacking. It's straight doofuses. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone, for me, had crazy ups and downs. All right. The first three episodes were f- 
phenomenal, man. They were like some of the best I've watched in anime in a long time. And that goes for animation, characters, and pacing. And then when you get four, five, six, it kind of dips, like dips, because crazy ass, like super long backstories of people just staring out the window. Uh, not a lot of not a lot of progression going on. And then, then some shit pop off with uh, Sukasa, and it gets up again, and it's super live. You gotta be careful because oh no, Senku's probably gonna die because Sukasa's dream is a little bit different than Senku's, and shit getting hype again. And then it just fucking falls when we hit the village because he's slowly building his kingdom of science. They have this tournament arc that was completely just erased when they found out who Senku actually really was because he should have been the fucking chief of the village in the first place because it was his dad who were the founders of it. So, like, it it, it had a lot of ups and downs for me, but overall, I think the show is definitely good. Um, I, I enjoyed some of the waifus in it. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Who's uh, your favorite? Shit. I don't know who you're gonna say though. The the fighting chick. What's her name? Kohaku. Kohaku? Yes. Okay, I didn't know who you was gonna say. I I, 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 I barely saw Yuzuria. It would have been Yuzuria if I would have saw her for more than two episodes. I thought you were gonna say what's her face? Ruri. Nah, Ruri. Because she, she has the lumps. Nah, she I mean, they both had the lumps, but <laughs> Ruri was just a just kind of a means to an end, I guess. Yeah. Um, so Dr. Stone for me, I, I agree, started off extremely strong. So strong. Um, it dipped for me, but not nearly as much as it did for you, bro. Like, yeah. um, I, I think there was moments where I had to talk you out of like, not like just stop watching it. Yeah, you're right. But, um, I was extremely critical. Yeah, it did not drop that low for me. I had my lows were not that low. My lows were like, this is still good, and I'm I still want to see the next episode. Um, I think at no point ever was it almost like I just don't want to watch this, you know? Mm, yeah. Um, but I will say, um, some of the storylines were some parts of the story were stronger. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, I really liked the ending so much more than I liked almost everything else because the yeah. ending kind of. It was an actual say, rap, kind of. Yeah, it made yeah. me want to see more. Yeah. You know, the cliffhanger wasn't like a just open cliffhanger. We know what's about to happen next. Yep. We just don't get to see it tomorrow. Yep. Um, I agree. But uh, basically, I don't know, bro. I, I I think it deserves hype, just not all of the hype. It's getting all of the hype. Let's yeah. uh, Obviously, it's getting all the hype. With that, uh, hopefully you guys know our review scale now. So you want to read off our review scale? All right. So how our scale goes um, is five topics or five subjects. Number one being pacing. Um, number two being story. Number three, animation. Number four, sound design. And number six is just the characters themselves. Or five, you mean. Or number five. You know, I'm, I'm messing up. <laughs> I, I skipped the whole number. Hey, whoever uh, listens this far and gets that part, don't joke it. Don't laugh at me. It's Tweet at him. Accident. Tweet at me, you know. <laughs> Get me on Twitter. But yeah, number five being characters. So we rank, um, we both give a rating, we average it out, and then um, you know. Yeah, so we take our two different scores, we average those together, and then we take that entire overall and give a final score off of that. All right, so first things first, pacing. What you got for me, Tell? Oh, oh, you want me to go first? You want, I can start with pacing if you want. Pacing, 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 get a cool six point five for you from your boy. Clean. Uh, I'm gonna put a P right. It was here. a polo. Yeah, it was just inconsistent. Um, the goods were great though. The bads were bad, in my opinion. Definitely so you got, six point five. Six, six point five. Uh, I myself, Mister Teliano, will be giving. The pacing of eight. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. All right. We differ. Uh, so, in terms of story itself, though, is that next? 
Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with story first. My personal opinion on the story is that it gets a nine. And for me it gets an eight point five. Story was good, man. The the whole idea of something like this and how do you handle it is wonderful. It only gets an eight point five because again, inconsistencies. Um you wanna you wanna rate the animation, bro? Oh, animation? God, yeah, this this wasn't great. The animation in Dr. Stone wasn't great. Now, it's only going to be higher than the pacing for me by 0.5. So that's going to give it a seven, seven flat. I give it a seven flat because the best part about Dr. Stone's animation, I did like the character design when they were just looking normal. And I also enjoy the environments around the characters. Like a lot of the art that the characters and the actions that the characters were doing in the show were god awful. But the art designs of the character is different enough for me to be like, oh, this looks this is unique. Right. Like you have they they have their own unique art style, kind of like uh, Jojo's, Mojo's, Desperate Housewives. And then you got uh, you got the, like the, the scenery, the, the the clouds on certain scenes, the trees and the forest or the ground even looks fantastic. So that's the only reason why it's higher than pacing for me, because those parts look great. <laughs> But anim- actual animation is atrocious. All right. So. Atrocious is harsh. I don't mean that. Damn, I'm so I'm the negative one. I'm the fucking <laughs> negative one of this podcast. In terms of animation, I thought the animation for. Uh, <laughs> I thought the animation for Dr. Stone was amazing. Like. And. And I say amazing as in like it wasn't amazing all the time. And that's why it got the score I gave it is that it wasn't always this amazing. It was like it was amazing at those points where it was like, let's drop 10 times the budget on this like five second clip right here. So in my opinion, I'm going to give it a seven as well, where I agree with Polo on the animation. Because like I said, they, oh, they had the, they had the they had the ability to do way better. I thought you. I swear to God, I thought you was gonna go higher with what you the way you described that. <laughs> they, they had the ability to go way higher. So like, like I said, they have instances where like instances where like okay, um, Senku makes a, a a breakthrough thought, and everything around him is shining, and you see these particles, and everything just looks amazing. Obviously, they can't put that entire uh, like look into the budget, but there was just like so much like lacking mm-hmm. um, in between those scenes that yeah. I just those scenes made up the most of like how beautiful it was. And it was a lot of recycled scenes too. Like if you notice a lot of, I mean, for story, I guess reasons, it was a lot of stuff that was reused and it was literally the same exact animation, same exact art style that they had in like three episodes ago. So, I mean, I noticed shit like that. Damn. I I feel, listen, listen, People that listen to Mike Check Waifu Waifu understand that polo taste is going to be different to yours, all right? But you can add me on Twitter and we can discuss it. I don't mind debating with anybody, okay? I'll give you my two cents and I'll hear your and I'll hear to your two cents. But I, I listen. I may need to do an an explanation after this on how, <laughs> why I'm so critical. Nah, bro, don't explain yourself to nobody. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think you next, right? All right. Um, I think the sound design is an 8.5. What? Yeah. <laughs> Are we watching the same show, bro? Yes. We're watching the same show. Um, if we're talking about like all the different scenes where like, for instance, where the, the poison poisonous gas was coming through, like, they literally made a difference between the twig that got destroyed by the noxious and poison gas hitting the ground versus how it sounded before it hit the ground when it was like perfectly like stable. You know, there's instances where the gas was going over the rocks and where it was just flowing coming towards them before it actually got close enough. Like the sound variable from like it, it crescendoed, the sound crescendoed to become greater and stronger as it got closer to them. Like, I don't know, bro. I feel like they deserve an 8.5 for that sound design. That shit was so average that it hurts. The sound design was so average that it's, 
I guess the best part is during the tournament arc when they would swing on each other. That sounded decent. And then I like the ending song. Like whenever the, the chick was singing, the song was real good. Um, it's like the music wasn't even that great in the show itself. Uh, I hated the intros. Oh fuck, dude! <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to justify eight point five. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I'm, I'm gonna give this. Yeah, don't justify eight point five. Give it your score, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a six point five as well. Like I don't. I don't. I. I don't. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know. It's not. It wasn't that great to me. Probably because they had it was like kind of hip hoppy. That I mean that could be it, but I don't. I think if if you just didn't like it, you didn't like it. Because if it was good hip hop, you would have liked it. Yeah, that's true. All right, and then this is where you take off to see your part, right? Oh here. shit! What's that? Characters. Oh, Sinku was a fucking beast. Sukasa is incredible. Uh, Yuzuria was great. Uh, Kohaku was fantastic. Chrome was a little annoying. Uh, Meathead was <laughs> was dope. I liked him as a as a quote unquote villain. The villains were were sick too. The characters is going to get an eight point five for me. They're really really good. I like I like the characters a lot, especially Senku, especially our main characters. Maybe if we would have got more. Uh, Taiju, it would have been even higher. Um, but in Usury, of course. But yeah, I like I like the characters. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, my favorite character is uh Shinra's dad. Shinra. I feel like Oh, yeah, I feel like, okay. Yeah, I feel like he's, I feel like he's the goat. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. So he knew his he knew what his son liked, even though he knows he You mean Senku's dad, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I love Senku's dad. He's even though he knew that his son only cared about certain things, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we knew how like he expressed his love for his son and how his son accepted it. Yeah. Like Sen- like that last part when he, we knew Senku wasn't gonna say I love you or didn't want to even do that. He like his dad wanted to, but knows better because he knows what's gonna drive his son forward. Right. right? That felt like legit parenting. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, look, I'm not going to ever get to see you again. So 2,500 years in the future, here's what I'm going to do yeah. to kind of set you up, right? And I'm like, yo, his dad is the GOAT. That's just all that's to it. Um, and I enjoyed the hell out of, like, the sub voice acting for all of those characters, too. They were so good. Yeah. The the only character I didn't really like was uh, Kinro. Is that the... Uh... That's the the dude who couldn't see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> rules are rules. Yeah, come oh, on, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like loosen up a bit. Yeah. Uh, so what you gave it eight point five? Yeah. Then we're sitting in the same boat at eight point five. Dope. That's definitely deserving of eight point five. <laughs> you can. I don't know if y'all can see this uh, for the Patreon supporters and later on on YouTube. When the podcast actually goes up there, my dog is chasing his tail in the background. Yeah, I was looking at that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, Saber. You're the star of the show, bro. Uh, damn. Okay. okay, so we're taking the averages and we're doing that. I do. Okay, this is what I wanted to say. Why you do that? I am. Why do I. F- I. The way I watch anime is so... I feel so different than everybody else. I think everybody enjoys flashy, bombastic, loud, and get straight to the point. Instant gratification is what I call it on Twitter. They they love that, that, um, that power system that's simple, that you easy to understand. They love that story that's simple and easy to understand because I think about the shows that most people are just in love with and always talk about, right? You got Bleach, you got Naruto, you got One Piece, you got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Like these are the ones that most people just talk about all the time. And I'm just, I can't, I can't just, I can't just say action and animation is enough for me. I need my character development. Like I think uh, 
Tanjiro's character development is one of the best ever because we watch him go from nothing to what he to what he is later on. And that's very important to me. Same goes for um, Fire Force. Like we watch this company like the rookies basically learn about the world and then we we learn about the world with them and they train to get better. It's I don't know. I just enjoy character development and I don't need the instant gratification. Looks like you're done with the average. What you got? Uh, so I want to give my personal average first. Out of all of my scores, uh, it got an eight point two from me. Right, Polo. What do you think your score was after averaging yours out? Seven three. Ooh, seven point four. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty close. A, that's about where I am with it. So between the two of us. The official mic check waifu waifu rating is a 7.8. That's about right. And the new low. <laughs> <laughs> that's about right. Damn, that's crazy. We're going to get hate for that, bro. <laughs> the, the new low yeah. on our list is officially. Man, that's kind of crazy, huh? It's it's kind of my fault. It's, it's all my. No, it's kind of all my fault. But it's just what I feel, man. It's just what I feel. It's not your fault. <sighs> I can't believe Demon Slayer got hired in Dr. Stone. Well, yes, I can. I definitely can. What the fuck? You <laughs> yes, I can. Right. I most certainly can. Look, look, don't go crazy on me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just tripping. I don't, because I don't, I honestly don't think that Demon Slayer and Dr. Stone are that much different, to be honest. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, that's crazy. Well, um, I disagree. Okay. I'm wrong. I'm tripping. Right. I'm tripping. So remember, I'm letting Twitter get to my head. Mike check food waifu ratings. Demon Slayer got an eight point eight. Astro Lost in Space, our baby, got a ten. Yes, sir. Promise Neverland got a nine point three. Erased got an eight point seven five. Doctor Stone got a seven point four, putting it our lowest rated so far. Seven point four or seven point eight. Seven point four. Oh no, seven point eight. It is seven point eight. Okay. Seven point eight is you. Yeah, seven point four. So it's seven point eight, putting it at our lowest. Still our lowest regardless. Yeah, which is about right. I mean, it's about right. Because again, the, the scale is you. You think about a seven eight. This is out of ten. That's still pretty good. Yeah. So we said it was good. We didn't say it was great. Exactly. We think it's good, not great. I like it. I like it. I like it. I love it. So, uh, what are your thoughts? What What do you look for in anime, man? Should we say that for another? Yes, yeah, it's, it's late. We should say that for another topic. Let's I mean, take this. Let's take this. You want to say that for a real topic? Because I kind of do. I was gonna. Say, I mean, I I can say something real basic. Okay. And because I don't want I don't want to get too much detail because I do think that's a good topic for later. We can say that for maybe next week even. Yeah. Um. But if I'm gonna say what I'm looking for anime, I just want it to be well rounded. Um. I do appreciate high quality animation. I do prefer fighting anime. Yeah. Right. Because I got into a lot of fights as a kid. You, yeah, but I mean, I was um, there too. Then <laughs> uh, Clinton changed my life, right? Um, really, I just look for something well-rounded, bro. Like I want, I really want something that story-wise is going to change my life. So let's take let's take that, put a pin in it, and talk about that next week. Let's have that as a topic. I'm going to try my hardest to elicit some uh, some responses from Twitter and Facebook and stuff. Like I really want to know what people want out of their anime. I really need to know that because that I feel maybe they'll understand this a little bit better. If we give a, a, a real explanation into that, uh, going deeper into it. So we're going to do that, but right now we're going to take a quick break. It's going to be an extremely quick break, but we got a jam for you. So we got to play it. Uh, and, uh, we'll be right back. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you. 
And welcome back. What a great tune that is. Well, how you say his name? Shilo? Sh- Shiloh? Shiloh? He's incredible. I don't think he's ever made a bad song. Yeah, ever. I'd have to agree with you. <laughs> ever. So we just played that Shilo. Um, I mean, do not matter what song it is, but I think that one was called Swell. Swell is awesome. He's a good dude. Um, gives you that anime vibe, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So before we get into our My Hero talk, we did do a giveaway. And we elicited you to answer just one question by listening a little bit further into the podcast. And that one question was, who is your favorite waifu? It was simple. Who is your favorite waifu? We got a lot of different waifus, but there can only be one winner of the Amazon gift card. So we drew it before we started the show. <laughs> and the winner of the Amazon giveaway gift card is going to be Alex. Alex, she won. She won. Now, for those of you who don't know, that's actually one of our Patreon supporters' wife, Fu, in real life, Fu. <laughs> hey. So, congratulations to her. Uh, a lot of people entered. Um, only one can win. I'm sorry. We love you. Although, yeah. all of you that gave us this, it was pretty awesome. Hey, did you want to share her uh, her wife, Fu? Yes, please do tell. All right, so she chose what was it, Kisugaya <laughs> from Bleach. Which is so, so funny. So like out of all the out of all the waifus who got entered, she actually had a husband though. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, look on mic check waifu waifu, we gotta have a husband. And I was like, yo, she hit us with it. Yeah. And first of all, to be randomly selected out of all those. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Crazy. It is what it is. So the one husbando we got got selected. That's crazy. Yeah. He's the ice dude, if you don't remember from Bleach. Right. I do remember him. Mad chill. Uh, basically, Drip drip Senior. Yeah. <laughs> drip Senior. <laughs> drip Senior, for sure. Yeah, he, he's a good dude. I don't remember much of Bleach, but I, that's one character I do remember. Bleach was... Yeah. Oh, you know what? Bleach was my show that I used to have on in the background with Tsunami. <laughs> you know how yours was... Uh, what was yours? You, uh, Full uh, Battle Alchemist, right? And bleach. And bleach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I went and bought Ichigo store and didn't even finish like the right. first season. <laughs> right. Yeah. Bleach was no, always no, just being back me for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bleach just isn't that good. I think a lot of people know that. But well, no, it's a lot of bleach dance too. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Congratulations, Alex. You're awesome. It's crazy. Out of all those white fools, only one husbando we got got picked. Right. <laughs> All right, now it's time for the My Hero Talk, the wrap-up. Um, we talked about a lot of it at the beginning of the show, so it ain't really much to add to that. The episode, again, this season is doing something like it's It's so obvious what they're doing, right? They need these episodes to be drawn on, and maybe this is all going to wrap up to something more meaningful, which I'm praying for. But I'm starting to get bored. I'm starting to get real bored. Like, even during the fights, even during the fights, like, the fights are awesome if it's all just together. But when you got these long-ass backstories, that's literally, the this, this show is 23 minutes with no commercials. The, the backstory is literally 18 fucking minutes, dog. Like, that's that's when I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, I'm, all right. I get it. I get it. Okay. We did not need to repeat how many times he he said I looked up to this hero. I wanted to be like this hero. This is who I wanted to Im- imitate. I can't. I can't protect people because I'm too scared. I, like it's just it was too much. The backstory was awesome though, but it was too much repetitive talk that kind of was relatively boring to me. Yeah. So the the backstory repeated a lot um, in terms of that specific character. I did love the idea that instead of giving us the backstory, because it did talk a little bit about who he wanted to be. Yeah. But it also showed um why he the slug the slug girl. Uh yeah, and it gave yeah. us some backstory about her. That was awesome. And that too. was I agree. That was one of the parts about his backstory that I really enjoyed was the fact that, that it delved into two. Yeah, it delved into two people and yeah. kind of also gave us the idea, like, cause we haven't really seen go all out yet. Right. And We've seen her do a little bit, but we haven't seen her grow yet. And that was like that kind of insight to seeing what she was before. So hopefully when we get something about her in the future, mm-hmm. there's more growth that that kind of unlocks. Right. 
with that, that part I did enjoy. Like it could, it, and it could have been just the part where they would talk about her, and then they would they would show her saving the girls because he couldn't save them, and that could have been it. Like that could have been perfectly fine, and would have been more than enough. And obviously, talk about the the hero he looked up to. Like they could have did that, uh, showed her. And then showed her saving him because he was too scared to. And then showed that little clip that they showed of why the dude just kind of ran in and how he didn't show any fear. But he admitted to obviously being scared because if you're not yeah. scared and something wrong with you <laughs> like and that could have been it. We didn't need all of the extra him going to school and talking to his his other friends, talking about I want to sign up for, you know, the hero course. It, all that extra shit that just wasn't wasn't prevalent you know what i'm saying yeah they, i mean yeah they could have cut that out because obviously we know he wanted to sign up p there yeah exactly you know? <laughs> um so i mean but also we got the idea that maybe of course either so i mean i don't know bro i personally enjoyed the backstory um i i agree with you though and i didn't even really i didn't really agree with that point until you just said it like I didn't need to. He seemed like he would already want to be a hero. Right. So I didn't need the backstory saying maybe he wanted to be a hero. Right. But it, it makes me think about like how um, Deku versus, versus the Todoroki fight went. Mm-hmm. And I loved the back, backstory in between that. Yeah. But a lot of times when I watched it, I would just skip the talking mm. and just go, go to the fight. So I, I, I rewatched that fight like five times, bro. The same day I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, I got to rewatch this right now. Yeah. And I rewinded it and was like, Okay, so yeah. how so? Because remind me, how was that cut together with the backstory that they threw into? Same way, it was basically like, uh, "Hey, Deku is breaking his bones to fight uh, Todoroki, and Todoroki is feeling a little pushed back." And all of a sudden, it goes into the backstory about how Todoroki got his face burned and why he won't use his fire quirk. Was it most of the after- episode? It was wasn't most of the episode. No, it was definitely more fighting. But it was oh, to me, it was the same amount of fighting as there was backstory in this one. Mm, like it was the same that. amount of back, it was the same amount of backstory in, in both episodes to me. Really? Okay. Like, I felt like it was maybe three or four minutes of backstory. It just feels like it drug dragged on so long. Dog, you know, that shit felt way longer than that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty sure it was only like maybe three or four minutes of backstory. It just feels like it dragged on. Dude, like it is no way it could be only three or four minutes, bro. Like I literally every time I'm watching it on my computer and I'm moving my mouse over the timeline to see how long this shit is going. That shit is <laughs> way more than three or four minutes. Yeah, I'm talking like nine or ten minutes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We gotta time that. I don't gotta, I'm gonna, yeah, I gotta look that up. I'm gonna get to, get back at you next episode. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. I don't know, bro. I I enjoyed this week's episode, and I loved seeing Fat Gum. Fat Gum, dude, he's awesome, right? Though, and and I love the fact that like no one saw it coming. And after reading the manga, because I read this chapter like two years ago, so it's like in my mind, this I completely forgot that that was about to happen. Yeah. I loved it. It was like, yo, Fat Gum was like, hold this hand for me real quick. Yep. He's so ball like, eh, eh, eh. yeah. So for all the people who uh. <laughs> You know who didn't watch it and may want to know because, like I said, we do know this is spoiler content here. Um, so don't just talk about I leak everything. This is, yeah. where, we <laughs> this is where we leak stuff at. Yeah, this, um, this is the end portion where we talk about it. But yeah, but um, I, I just want to say like he fat gum absorbs all the the blows. He he's his body is made of fat. It basically absorbs everything in, mm-hmm. and he's absorbing all these blows from um Rappa, who is. His quirk is called Bullet, where he punches with the, the speed and power of a bullet. And we got Fat Gum taking in all these hits. He's got his guards up, got his dukes up, blocking these punches and absorbing them all. And he's getting blown up. And we see him getting skinnier and skinnier. Like, they're literally knocking the fat out this dude. Mm-hmm. Um, Kirishima tries to get in the way and take a blow. He get hit one time. And basically, all of his like skin and stuff, all that unbreakable. Nah, stop that, my dude. That's it's when broken. we get that backstory. That's when we get that backstory. That uh, like we said, man, could have been paced better. I liked most of it, but I, I agree with Polar. Some parts like that, yeah, you could have cut that out. But um, that's where we had that backstory, and he tried to muscle up again and get in there, and he threw a bunch of punches, got pounded out, and we saw like basically. That uh, even though he had come come so far, he hadn't gone far enough yet to be fighting this kind of villain. Right, like, this villain is a whole nother level. 
this is probably like if we I would say if we compare him, he's probably muscular strength. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, and I, I he, would uh, agree with that. Yeah, yeah, he blew Kirishima back because um, Kirishima wasn't ready for muscular level of strength. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he went at one thousand percent. But uh, Fat Gum basically says like, "Thank you for buying me that time." And we see like he has all that power he was hit with stored up, and he sends it back. Yep. At uh, Rappa. Now, um, we didn't say this earlier, but Rappa has a teammate with him at the moment, who actually is um able to create put up barriers. A yeah. Yeah, create a barrier that is impenetrable. Well, after taking all that damage that Fat Gum did, uh, our boy Fat Gum didn't have to. Uh, Hold back at all, and he punched right through that barrier, blew him back, punched both of them into the wall, blew all, blew them all the way back. Though, um, I thought it was hype. That was that was that, that was definitely the best part of this episode, dude. Hearing you explain it like this, if we didn't have the backstory, just imagine if that that was just straight through. How incredible! How much well, more incredible that would have been. That would have been sick, dude. That no, been so sick. You gotta remember, there's more to come. Obviously, that that yeah. part was epic. So good, it was dude. beautiful. I'm so glad that they did it that way. Um, obviously, this is not like you foldable level animation. No, but that's but not what it's about. even yeah. Even though the the story and the animation, in my opinion, is so good right yeah, now. Yeah, 100. I think it's fired. Like, uh, this story is is so captivating. Even if the episodes are boring, the story is still like. They got to get this girl, man. I need to know if they're going to get this girl. I need to see how this is going to inevitably be in the end. Like, is overhaul Thanos or no? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, you know, like, (laughs) I can't wait. The the sad part is if he met Thanos, it would probably be real bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. All I need is one poke. Anyway. Right. This has been episode 27 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Next week, we already have a predetermined topic. What was that predetermined topic? <laughs> We're going to talk about what do you look for in anime? Yes, like, what are your, yes. What are your, your quirks? What do you want to see in the anime? Yes, no, that's going to be our quirks. topic. <laughs> yeah, no my hero quirks. Look, what, do you, what do you like in anime? What do you like your anime to be is basically what's going to be our topic. And we're definitely going to share those on the show. Um that show is gonna be our Christmas episode, our Christmas episode too, right? Hey, Christmas! Yeah, they come you see on my hat. <laughs> they come out on Christmas. So uh, wait, Christmas is the twenty fifth. It comes out Christmas Eve. Mm. So a nice little present for you there. Um, you enjoy it with your family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe yeah, go from there. Anyway, I've been Polo. That's been Tell. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Polo Barfly. <sighs> you can follow me everywhere, King Teliano. You can follow our my check waifu waifu accounts on Twitter at my check waifu, and then on Instagram at my check waifu waifu, and join our Facebook group because it's on and popping over there. Always, always on and popping, and uh, check out our Patreon. Support us if you want, if you can. We appreciate you at any level, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. My check. One, two, one, two. My sweet wife here. Is that you? Whatever.